Praise God this morning. I welcome everyone to my YouTube channel as we continue on this series, Understanding the Times. My name is Apostle Blessing David Dida Hagma, and today we are looking at part four in the series. So far, we started out with the prophecy, the prophetic declaration, setting the timetable for this series. We looked at the two rulers. We looked at the Prince of Peace and the Prince of this world. During the part three, we looked at the two systems. We looked at the system of truth, and we also saw the system that is built on deceit. We saw that the system of truth, it's a system that is stable, a system that is reliable, a system that has continuity, there's no breakage. But we looked at the system of deceit, and we saw clearly that that is the present system of the world. That's why when Jesus was speaking in John's Gospel, he said that the prince of this world comes, he has nothing in me. One thing is very, very clear. We saw the, during the part two, under the true rulers, that they both rule by proxy, whether it is Jesus or it is the prince of this world, which is Satan himself. So as we progress, you get to understand that when we see the manifestation of some of these things, you know who is behind it. Uh, currently in this world, that's why the Bible warns us against loving the world, neither the things that are in the world, because it was referring to this system of deceit. John's Gospel 844, we saw last week, told us that the devil is a liar and is the father of faith. This system runs, the current system, corrupt system in this world, belongs to the prince of this world, Satan himself. And that's why there's so much disinformation, there's so much misinformation, especially even during this uh, pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic. And last week, we actually drew the fact that believers must be weary of the information they see. We must take our time to cross-check whatever facts or information that is being dished out, doled by various governments across the globe, using the scripture to find out if these things are so. Today, we will be making a progress as we look at part four in the series, Understanding the Times. Today, we want to look at the mission. There are clearly two missions. When, when we talk about mission, we are talking about a special assignment that is given to a person or a group. That is a mission. There is neither this Prince of Peace, which is our Lord Jesus, nor the Prince of this world are here without a mission. They are on a mission. And then today we want to unravel what those missions are. We're going to be having a very fantastic time today. And part of the mission you get to understand into this series. For example, believers wonder, why is it that across the globe, it seems to be that it's only Christians that are being persecuted? Seriously. You know, even in a place like America that is called God's own country, you'll find out that the Muslim there, they do things and then they get away. They have leeway. And then we are wondering, why? That's because we don't understand the scriptures. And that's the reason why we are looking at understanding the times. And today we want to see the mission. The Antichrist is not against Islam. The Antichrist is not against Hinduism. The Antichrist is not against African traditional religion. Hear me and hear me clearly this morning. The Antichrist is only against the disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ. It wasn't Allah who cast down Satan. It was Yahweh. It was Jehovah who thrust Satan down from heaven when iniquity was found in him. So necessarily, it's not going after the children of Allah. It's not going after the followers of Muhammad. You know why? They are useful idiots to him. Yes, because they are the ones he's, he's also using to persecute the Christians. So do not be bothered. Don't wonder why is it that it is only Christians that are being singled out. Christians and Jews. Now look at what is happening even in the United Nations. The Jewish nation is being singled out for sanctions every now and then. Don't, don't wonder. 
both Christians and the Jews are categorized. He is after them, both of them. Now that you know, you can get yourself prepared and understand that some of these people are useful idiots to the Antichrist. Don't forget, we understand in 2 Thessalonians 2.7, his reign, the system is already in place. So the reason why we are educating ourselves as believers so that we don't fall victim because Jesus won in Matthew's gospel 24, that many will be deceived. And today's teaching is going to give you an eye opener. It's, it's going to be an eye opener, beg your pardon, for you to understand what is really happening. And the focus we'll be having today, that's why we established that there are two rulers basically. It is either is the prince of peace or the prince of this world. Every group, every country, every organization aligns themselves under these two rulers. So when we start talking today, and it looks as if I'm referring to human beings, I want you to understand who we are actually referring to. We are referring to the prince of this world, Satan, the devil himself. Glory to Jesus this morning. Let's look at the book of John's Gospel. John's Gospel, chapter 10. John's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse 9 to 10. I'll be using the King James Version, the old King James Version. Verse 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In this very scripture, I just read to us now, herein lies the two missions of these two rulers. Jesus didn't say, I am a door. He said, I am the door. There are no two ways to escaping the rot that is going to fall upon this earth. No two ways. Jesus is not a door. Jesus is the door. He is the only door. He said, I am the door, the potter, the entrance. Through which if anyone pass through, you are saved. The Greek word there saved is sozo. Sozo is like the Hebrew word shalom. It means to be liberated. It means to be blessed. It means to be fruitful. It means to be delivered. So, until you are saved, you are not safe. Until you are saved, you are not safe. If you are not sozoed, you are not safe. And only in Christ would you find that. If we find a man of God who is trying to paint the picture that there are many paths and many ways to God, that person's calling is questionable. There are no two ways about it. If you like, say we are pompous. Of course, that is it. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. He doesn't share that responsibility with anybody. There are no many paths to God. There's only one path to God. And it's through Jesus Christ. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, among the... The Greek meanings of the word sozo is the fact that sozo carries with it deliverance from the penalties of the Messiah. And it also gives the opportunity for you to be delivered from your ability of not being able to receive the Messiah. There are two things there. Deliverance from the pending judgment of the Messiah and your ability to receive the Messiah. Now, somebody might be wondering, what's the apostle saying? Some persons are doomed 
particularly this end time that we are in, they can never accept the Messiah as we walk towards the mark of the 666. If a man takes it, such a person is doomed. You don't have the capacity to receive the Messiah. You can't welcome the Messiah anymore. You are, you are cut off from that opportunity for life. It's done. And also, when you get born again, you are prevented from the future judgment. So salvation is not going to church, carrying your Bible, clapping hands and dancing and asking for food. When you get saved, people of God, when you get born again, your present and the future is taken care of. The impending danger of the reign of the Antichrist, you just escape it. God is the most meticulous being on earth. One decision you make saves you from the Antichrist. It saves you from hell. It saves you from the plagues that will be unleashed on the world, on this earth. One decision of accepting the Lordship of Jesus rescues you from all of that. How awesome is salvation. Yet we have, we have reduced salvation to bread and butter. We have reduced it to cars, to houses. We have reduced it to having clothes. That's why I'm opening your eyes this morning. When you get saved, that moment you get saved, you escape the Messianic judgment. The rot of the Messiah that will be unleashed on this earth, you are exempted from it. You have not taken your first, you have not said your first word after being born again. You've already escaped the judgment. How fantastic the life in Christ is. We need to begin to understand. That's why there's no reason for a believer to be afraid. Your heart should not be palpating with fear. If you understand what it means to be saved. It doesn't matter what they are planning. You just look at them and say, you guys are wasting your time. Me, Mark of 66, you are wasting your time. I have escaped it. Praise God. Why? Because I am so zoned. Praise God. Until you are so zoned, you are not safe. Until you are saved, you are not safe. The being safe is not whether hunger or food. No, 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 no. He's talking about this impending doom that is going to fall upon the system of this world. There is an impending doom on this earth. And there is an impending doom on the reign of the Antichrist. And that impending doom is going to catch everyone that is on the side of the Antichrist. Irrespective of race, tribe, color, it doesn't matter. Mission 1 is, called, is code name Scotus. The first mission we want to look at is mission Scotus. It's a Greek word, S-K-O, a Hebrew word, S-K-O-T-O-S. Remember when we took the part one, darkness covering the earth, gross darkness, the people. And that darkness is not just darkness. It's obscurity, but much more than that, it is misery. It means misery, a life of misery, a life of pain. That's what Scotus is. So the first mission is mission Scotus. And you know the person that has that mission. is the prince of this world. That's his mission. What did John tell us? John's Gospel 10. The first part. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Let's begin to look at the Greek word. The word to steal means to take away. How? To take away by stilt. Now let me tell you something about stilt. The US they have stilt bombers. When something is stilt, it means it's not visible. It's up there, you are not seeing it. It is camouflage, it can blend with the environment. So you don't see it coming. So when it's coming to steel, don't think it's gonna be obvious. For example, there is debate all around about the vaccine that is coming. If the vaccine it will be the Antichrist, that a chip is, is coming. Don't you see how it's coming? 
It's coming like it's offering you help. Yes. The devil doesn't come to steal from anyone visibly for you to know. Everyone who has ever fallen victim of 419 felt they were the one cheating the 419. <laughs> Praise God this morning. <laughs> Everyone that has ever fallen victim felt the 419 wasn't smart enough. Because the 419 offers you what is so great that you forget to think about the person. What is his own portion if he's giving you this? Don't you realize, haven't you realized, haven't you observed that 419 never tell you their own share? They only tell you what they are going to give you. And then you get carried away by what, by, for what you're going to apparently receive from them, not knowing that it is the very little one you have that is coming for. So when the Bible says the thief, that gives him another name again. He's a thief. Don't forget also in Revelation, Jesus was described as a thief. He said he's going to come as a thief in the night. As a thief, but the devil is called a thief. The thief, rather. So Jesus' own is a simile. It's a description. That means when he's going to come is when you're not going to expect. But the devil is the thief. So that's another title. So add that to his title list. The thief does not come except he's coming to steal. So every time somebody thinks, let's look at it, even take it down to the issue of corruption, the issue of money. Look at these rituals, these Yahoo Plus guys. To them, the, the native doctor is offering them wealth. But what are they really losing? Is their soul. That's why the Bible asks, what will it profit a man if he gains the old world and loses his own soul? Because there is a time the, the life we spend here will elapse. And then we, ha we have to deal with God for all eternity. So you see, it comes to steal. That's why we have to be weary. I'm going to get to a point today. We have to be weary. It comes to steal. It is by stilts. It comes to kill. That's slaughter. Uh, now we see that today. It's common. Have you not observed that killing of human beings is not as sacred? Human life is no longer as sacred. In fact, we spend, we hesitate when we want to slaughter goats, ram, and animals. When you see these barbaric people, these useful idiots, like I called them a while ago, when they are slaughtering human beings, they don't hesitate. Just look at how Boko Haram kills people. They, slot, they cut their neck. Look at how ISIS kill people. They slaughter their neck slowly. They don't even use gun. They want you to feel it. Like see if they are slaughtering chicken. It's slaughter. The Greek word there is slaughter. They sacrifice them. You know the funny thing about the animal that is sacrificed? It's the only animal that doesn't benefit from itself. Who we'll get to that? <laughs> and then to destroy. This is very crucial. The Greek word destroy there is to take something out of the way. Hold on. That means you were already in the way. You were already on the way rather. It's to take something out. It's to take you out of the way so as to render you useless. Who is the thief? The thief in the Greek is the word kleptis, which means an, an embezzler. Someone who misappropriates other person's property for his own personal gain. A pifferer. Somebody who makes off with someone else's property. Now, let me say something that is going to shock you. The first example that was given with this word that was translated thief. In, the, in English, was found in the church. I want you to hear me and hear me carefully today. When you are engaged in a warfare with an enemy, and both of you meet in a neutral ground, there's no much problem. But when the enemy wants to do real damage to you, the enemy comes to your environment for three things. One, you will lose your men, Two, your infrastructure will be, will be destroyed. Three, and the worst of it, he will psychological, he, he will damage your citizen's psyche. 
and that is worse. Because all through they'll be thinking, they'll be wondering, how did they get to this place? They came to our very place, slaughtered us, destroyed our infrastructure. What is the guarantee that they won't show up tomorrow? Are you getting it? So the third reason is even of a stronger impact. So what am I saying? How else will the prince of this world do damage to the property of God if not finding his way into the very church? So that's why I said, don't forget the prince of this world or the prince of peace himself. They operate by proxy. But as we progress, you will discover why Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them, not their face, not their looks. It is by their fruits you will know them, not by their looks. But you need to understand teachings like this for you to be able to identify the ones that are putting on castle, but are actually agents of the prince of darkness. Shocking. It's in the church. It's referred to those who have left instructing people with the word of God and they go into every other thing. Where do you find those who call themselves prophets? Who tells married women that God instructed them that there is anointing in their semen? If they sleep with a woman, the woman will become fertile. Not too long ago, this same very year, a female pastor came out openly. I read about a female pastor who said there is anointing in her vagina. And that if any uh, uh, barren, non-fertile man sleep with her, he's going to become fertile. And she gave an open invitation to married men to come. Who is that? That's the pastor. Where is she? In the church. I want you to begin to understand the things happening. Don't be alarmed. You hear a strange story and you're wondering, eh, after they go call themselves pastors, you don't know nothing. You should be able to disagree. That's why Jesus said, it is only by their fruits you know them. Some of them dress better than we do. They look finer and cleaner than we do. But Jesus said, it is by their fruits, not their looks. It is by their fruits, not their faces. You will identify them. There is no way you give them five minutes. When they speak, you'll be able to tell where their heart is. For where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be. How are we grooming the people? We have names, fantastic names, big names. By their fruit, you should know them. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 16, 20 that I just quoted. Mission scottles. Mission of misery. So look at it. All is given to you. It takes something away from you. He slaughters you. It takes you out of the way. Please. The Antichrist, the group of persons is really going to physically confront are going to be more of the Jews, not Christians. Right now, he's, he's, he's been attacking believers. He has sent his own soldiers into your very environment. They climb the pulpit and they shout hallelujah. But watch the content of their message. Watch the content of their message. Right now, many of them don't have messages. In the midst of this pandemic, they are still identifying themselves. They are going to bring water and tell you it's holy water. They will bring olive oil and tell you they have prayed upon it that the thing is going to destroy COVID-19. When you anoint your head, come for special COVID-19 anointing service. They are identifying themselves. Because that's not their job. Your job is to instruct the people of God in the way of the Lord. Don't forget. Kill. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. What was the first meaning of the word destroying the Greek? To take you out of the way. Because 
The enemy cannot hurt you. The Antichrist, every time I say the enemy now, please let your mind be focused on the devil himself, the Antichrist, the prince of this world. He cannot hurt you as long as you are in the way. Jesus said, I am the way. But the moment he successfully takes you out of the way, you are vulnerable. You become or you're on your own. So let's watch out for these agents of darkness that are closer to us. You are expecting some, some highly dressed up military people who come with guns. No, that time is going to come. And that time many believers would have left. The raptures would have taken place then. But not all Christians will be raptured. It's not because they are unbelievers. No. Check the program of God. You understand that not all Christians will be raptured. It's not because they are sinners. No, but because they have their own function to play. Unique function. And by the way, even after the rapture, people are still going to get saved anyway. They don't get saved to become Jews. They get saved to become Christians. Praise God this morning. So, so uh, getting born again does not end with the rapture. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. And those who get saved, how do they grow if there are no one or two persons left around to direct them, to instruct them? Now you understand. Don't get scared. I've already told you that the moment you got so zoot, you were liberated from the Messianic judgment. The Messianic judgment is going to fall on the reign of the Antichrist. So you are exempted. Praise God. So don't get worried about going with uh, first flight or going with second flight. That doesn't matter. Your destination is the most important thing. Glory to Jesus. Understanding the times part four today. So that is mission scotus. It's a mission of misery. It's a mission that ensures that no one escape. Revelation chapter 16. The entire chapter. But time will not allow us to read it. I will just read verse 1. Go and read Revelation chapter 16, 1 to 21. You will see we had the seven rocks, the seven plagues called seven vice was poured on the earth. That's the messianic judgment on those who turn their backs against him. People don't go to hell because they sin. They go to hell because they rejected the gift of God, the free gift of God in the person of Jesus. Praise God. Revelation 16 verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vice of the wrath of God upon the earth. Did you see that? So this earth is bound for destruction. This present earth is bound for destruction. It's bound for misery. It's bound for judgment. It is the messianic judgment that you escape when you get suzzled. I hope somebody is getting that this morning. So you don't worry about Bill Gates vaccine. I'm not pet up about whatever is going to happen. Whether the rapture happens before then or not, please don't bank. Because if it now happens that the rapture didn't, that the Antichrist will, will appear in person before the rapture takes place, then many of us are finished. Because you are banking on escaping without knowing that you have been genetically designed to defeat the Antichrist. Glory to Jesus. The moment you get saved, you are genetically designed to defeat the Antichrist. And all of his armies. So get that and know that truth and settle it in you. He said you'll be saved. And one other thing. People think when you get born again that you lose your freedom. On the contrary. Didn't you read in verse 9? John's Gospel 10. He said he will go, in, go out and come in and find pasture. So being saved does not take away your freedom. It takes something away from you. Your bondage. Your captivity. It pulls you away from the system of the world. And gives you freedom. Freedom to go out and come in. Why? Because there is no threat. Praise God. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can by enemies harm you. Let's not be banking on. Oh, rapture, come. So I don't face that man. If I'm going to face him, so be it. He's a defeated foe already. Praise God. Because the rate at which this thing is going. Let me tell you, the rapture is not going to happen this year. No, no. The world is not ending. The rapture will not happen this year. That is the truth. You better tell yourself now. The, the big vaccine you people are afraid of, 
is going to come before the end of this year. Please take the apostle seriously this morning. The rapture is not happening this year. I can tell you that straight up. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's not happening this year. You know why? Last week we saw the sign. This gospel shall be preached to every ethnos, the first part in Matthew 24. That's every ethnic group we hear it. We have over 11, between 11 to 13,000 ethnic groups across the globe. It's not been covered. So the rapture is not happening this year. And with COVID-19, no missionary work is taking place again. People are not traveling to do missionary work. Where you are, you have to stay there. You don't relocate anymore for now. So please, if you are dreading, if you dread the Bill Gates vaccine, and you say it is the 66, and your own escape route is that the rapture is going to take place so that you won't face it, then you have lied. And if that vaccine is truly the 66 vaccine, I've not said it is, I've not said it is not. I'm not going into that. Because what concerns me, now listen, does a man bother about his opponent when he knows all opponent they will bring, he can defeat them? He's not bothered. That's not his focus. He knows you are bringing James, John, or Andrew. He has defeated all of them. He knows he can beat all of them. So you pick your choice. That is not his business. Why are you worried about when the vaccine will come out, when the rapture will take place? It's because you don't know. You don't understand that when you got saved, you were genetically designed to defeat the Antichrist. Praise God. Listen, heaven is not for escapees. Let me say that again. Heaven is not for escapees. To him that overcometh, not to him that escape. So rapture is not an escape root. It is for champions that have defeated, that have conquered. God is saying, welcome home. It's for conquerors. It's for champions. Not for lily livered believers. Not for those who are cowards, who are afraid. Hear the ugly truth and hear it today. And better brace up. Praise God. When Jesus said, many shall be deceived, you, you, now you can begin to figure out what he was talking about. I don't care when he brings it out. I don't care when it is released. I'm talking about the mark of the beast. I don't care if it is Bill Gates vaccine. That is immaterial to me. They are defeated foes already. Glory to Jesus. They are defeated. What is the mission? What is mission scotus? Mission darkness, mission misery. It is to ensure that every person on this earth partake of the wrath of God that is going to come on him. Huh? <laughs> Don't forget in Revelation 12, now the Bible said there was war in, in heaven and they will clear that up during the part 3, the mid-heaven where Michael would trust him that and the Bible shouted woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has fallen and he's furious because he knows his time is short. The time of his reign there will be short. He will not have more than 7 years, 8 years. Before the wrath of God catches up with him and the earth. So, get that very clear. His mission <laughs> is to ensure he brings as many persons into that misery. Let me tell you, his real focus are not those that are saved. Because they are useful idiots to him. They are already his. His target are believers. His target are believers. That's why he has his men, his armies planted in churches. He has his men planted in churches. The ones who, do, who, who divert your attention from scriptures into all kinds of magic, into all kinds of stupid things. Somebody will stand and tell you there is anointing in a semen to impregnate another man's wife. A pastor will bring a single lady to the church in the full glare of members and they will both lie down on a couch. In the full glare of every other person is demonstrating how she's going to be sleeping with her husband when she gets married. Don't forget the era we are in. Era of iniquity. Where there's no law. The law is not operatable. It's not operational. That's the era we are in. So let's be smart. Let's be wise. Let's know where the real battle is for Christians right now. After the rapture. During the reign of the Antichrist fully, his focus is going to be on the Jews. 
Believers will be there, but his main focus will, go, will be on the Jews. He's already fighting us. We are not aware. We are, we are only seeing him through government policies. We are not seeing him in the very churches that we attend, some of us. And that's why Jesus said, Many shall be there. Can the government deceive you? No, the government can't deceive a believer. It takes somebody who is putting on clerical color to deceive a church folk. So open your eyes and let's be wise. Let's not be foolish. He has his men in churches around. Go and watch it. They are selling oil already. They are selling water. Water that will cure COVID-19. I didn't say they are offering you water. They are offering oil. I said they are selling. Because the Bible has identified them that their God is their belly. Whose God is their belly? They serve Mamo, the God of money. That's their focus. When you find members getting poorer and poorer and the pastor is getting richer and richer, you have identified one. You came into that ministry, you had two cars. Within one year, you are trekking. You are losing your properties. And the pastor is flourishing. In fact, he has one of your car. He sold the other one. And you still daddy him. Because you don't have Christian sense. Yeah, there's Christian sense. Praise God. <laughs> Common sense is general. It's cause 101. Christian sense is the sense you, der you derive from the Bible when you study it. So when you don't study it, you will never have Christian sense. It's called wisdom from above. Glory to Jesus. Mission 2 quickly as we begin to wrap up. Mission two is called Zoe. So we have mission Scottos and we have mission Zoe. What is Zoe? Zoe is the God kind of life. It is enhanced life. Now look at it. That is the reason why when you get born again, you are designed genetically to be superior to the Antichrist. You are designed genetically to overcome the Antichrist because the Antichrist, part of your sozo is that judgment is going to fall upon this earth. Why the Antichrist is physically reigning. You are designed to escape that. You are designed not to be victim of that. So while you are getting born again, the time, the second you got born again, you were actually escaping the Messianic rot. You were actually escaping the mark of the beast. You were, you were virtually, practically escaping it. So why the fear? Why the anxiety? Why the anguish? The misery that is designed for this world is not for those who are truly born again. For those who are saved. You are not safe until you are saved. <laughs> and being born again, you don't practice the life in Christ like you are visiting native doctors. Where every time you have to bring something to the church. You have to give God something before he gives you something. God is not a Nigerian police. Glory to Jesus this morning. Verse 10, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 10. 10b, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The Zoe means the real and the genuine life. Zoe is that life that is vigorous, is a life that is full of vitality, it's an enhanced life. Now, listen. When you get saved, you have God's enhanced life in you. Think of the Zoe as when you, you have a machine and they make an upgrade. You are an upgrade from the level of the natural human being. That's Zoe. So Jesus' mission is to give people enhanced life. That enhanced life is what guarantee your escape from falling victim of the Antichrist reign. That enhanced life is what gives you escape route from the impending judgment that's going to be for this earth and that's going to be for anyone that is not born again, that is not saved. So what Jesus has done is to in advance save you, save us from future doom, from future destruction. Fantastic. The very same life force that is in God is what is called Zoe in the Greek. And that's what you have. That's why part of the benefit of Zoe is that you escape the Messianic judgment. So quit putting fears into believers' head 
You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to beat the Antichrist and his government silly. Praise God. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know who I am. The Bible says in Christ Jesus, I triumph always. That includes this current COVID-19 pandemic that is ravaging people. Do you know pastors have died? Christians have died. How many pastors have died? Several pastors died in America. Several persons are dying. Now they begin to save water. I tell you, water will help you beat COVID-19. These are charlatans. Some of these persons don't even know Christ. They are not saved. Don't forget to destroy you. They have to take you out of the way. And Jesus is the way. So those who do not know they are God and be strong, they are the ones that will not do exploit. They are the ones that will aspire instead of doing exploit. I am come that you, not I will come. I am come that you may have life. If you receive me, therefore you have that life. So we have Mission Scottos and Mission Zoe. Mission Scottos ends you in misery. Mission Zoe gives you escape. Escape from the Messianic judgment. Escape from the reign of the Antichrist. That escape means there is no way they will make you receive that mark. God has programmed. No wonder the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Sozo is escape from the mark of the 66. Sozo is escape from the torture of the Antichrist. Sozo is escape from COVID-19 pandemic. Sozo is escape from eternal judgment in the lake of fire. Let's know who we are in Christ Jesus. Let's know who we are. Do you know the Zoe you carry here? That's the reason you can enter heaven when you, when you take your last breath. That is the life designed to enter heaven. That's why when Moses and the rest passed on, they couldn't until Jesus paid the price. The life force they had was not Zoe. It was Zao. It couldn't take them. But you have Zoe. Think of Zoe as that spacecraft. No matter how powerful a jet is, it can't go to moon. can't fly to moon. Our normal passenger jet. It takes a spaceship to go to the moon, to go outer space. So Zao cannot take you beyond this earth. Zoe will take you to heaven. You will feel comfortable there because you've been upgraded to that life. You think God upgraded you so that you can be degraded? No. You were upgraded so that you can get to heaven and come back with immortality and dwell in the new heaven and the new earth without shaking. So God is a master planner. So don't take for granted. You're not going to open your eyes in heaven and see you, you, see you having a different life. No. Your memory will be intact. That's one sign to let you know that this is you. It's still you. It's not a new person. God won't need to wave his hand to give you fresh life. No. Because the very same life he possesses is what you have in your spirit, man. Glory to Jesus. Understanding the, the times, part four. We'll be wrapping up this series next week. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Let's look at the book of Revelation. As we wrap up. Revelation chapter 15. And I saw, 1 to 8. And I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. Don't you see that God will mean, <laughs> God will mean the occupants of this earth. <laughs> he will mean the devil. For those who are saying God is too slow, that time you will see that uh, God is not slow. He will mean them. It will be series of series of attack. Then he is the attacker. Praise God. If God attacks a man, who, 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 who will help him? Nobody will. Nobody. 
Verse 2, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory. Did you see that? Them that had gotten the victory over who? The beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, and having the harps of God. And they sing the song. Did you hear that? They overcame the beast. They overcame the Antichrist. These are no escapees. Praise God. If you are having it in mind to escape the Antichrist, sorry for you, you will be kept here. Thank God you are not the one who will decide who will be raptured. It is God who decides it. If you are fearful and you are afraid, there's no rapture for you. I can tell you that because heaven is meant for champions. It's a place for conquerors. It's not a place for escapee. You don't run away from the devil and say, thank God I escape. That's not how a believer talks. Praise God. We go conquering. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says we, in all those things, we are more than conquerors. You are not an escapee. If you think like that, God is going to keep you here. Till you grow and conquer before you go to heaven. Read the the things Jesus gave to the churches, to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh. Not once did he say, to him that escape. It's to him that overcometh. Praise God. Amen. And they sing the song of Moses. Did you see that? The servant of God and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou king of the saints. Now, there's something I read now that you didn't take note of. The Bible said, and they sing the song of Moses and of the Lamb. Guess what that means? It's a mixture of Jews and Christians. The song of Moses pertains to the Jews. The song of the Lamb pertains to believers. There's no escaping. You are not escaping the rapture. You conquer. Praise God. The ones who have lived as conquerors are the ones, this is my take in this rapture thing. It is not for escapees. It's not for cowards. It is those who presently here have conquered the powers of darkness and they are ready to go home. If you have not, you are running. You are afraid of the gate vaccine. If that is the CCC, then you are going to face it. Praise God. You must overcome to get to heaven. You must overcome to get to heaven. You don't escape now. We defeat the enemy. We take our clothes and we fly. Praise God. <laughs> we are conquerors, not escapees. Glory to Jesus. Understanding the time. So please, prepare yourself. Become a student of the Bible. Feed yourself. That's why we're looking at this uh, understanding the times. Please feed yourself. Be equipped. Because the only one who will tell who and who will go with the first flight, when the flight will occur, is only the Almighty. Jesus said the day and the hour the Son of Man does not know. Only the Father knows it. So don't gamble with yourself. Oh. Start building your Christian faith. Start studying God's word. Start feeding on the scripture. Don't you see how the enemy takes us out of the way? He turns, he makes you feel that every other Christian, even when you know that these people are Christians, you see them as the enemy. He has taken you out of the way. Because the Bible clearly says, no one who hates his brother will find his way to heaven. Go and check First John. So let's be careful. The thief that is stealing, killing, and destroying has done a lot of damage to many Christians, to many church folks already, but they don't know. When a fellow Christian is your enemy, heaven is not your place. It's not your place. It's as simple as that. That's how you will continue to fool yourself. When the rapture will take place, the first flight, you will see yourself that you didn't go. That's when you will start from, from square one again. Bible says those who have ears to hear, let them hear. You need to understand that the life in Christ is that life It's that life that gives us victory. Understanding the times. People of God, ladies and gentlemen. 
Don't be bothered if the world is persecuting you and you only. And it seems to be that some other people are left out. I've told you they are useful idiots. When the Antichrist is done with them, he will only he will make sure that they don't escape his own wrath too. The wrath of the Almighty, his own punishment. So don't, don't bother about them. You are the target. The Antichrist hates everything God and Christ Jesus. Not everything Allah and Muhammad. So you are the target. And you need to understand that we are in the end times. And we have entered the era of lawlessness. The era of iniquity. That's the era of lawlessness. Where there's no law. Anything goes. He has taken many people out of the way already. From the church. Don't let that happen to you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is your opportunity. Until you are saved, you are not safe. Not to be saved means you are already a victim of the Antichrist. There are no two ways about it. If you are not born again, as we speak, you are already a victim. You are going to take the mark. There is no escaping it. There is nothing you can do about it. You will take the mark. Your only security is not dying and running to heaven. Is getting born again. Once you get born again, you are genetically designed to conquer the Antichrist and his reign. You are genetically designed to conquer the evil system. Currently, look at what is happening. Christians can't even stand simple pressure. You have to sleep with another man, sleep with another woman. You have to bribe your lecturer. You have to sleep with them. For common exam, you are very far away from heaven. You have been taken out of the way. Find your way back to the way. Praise God. This is part four, understanding the times. Next week, we will conclude it. And it's going to be mind-boggling. God bless you.